Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on displacement on a velocity time graph with a changing velocity. This is the second in a series of videos on the kinematic equations of motion when you have a constant acceleration. I'm going to leave the calculator behind for this video and here we have a velocity time graph. We have velocity in meters per second on the y-axis and we have the time in seconds on the x-axis. And you can see that we have an increasing line here representing an increase in the velocity. This is different from the first video where we just had a horizontal line representing a constant velocity. In this particular example, the velocity is changing or increasing. I'm going to start by labeling the graph with some letters. The starting velocity or the initial velocity here where it touches the y-axis, we're going to label as u. If you remember from the first video, that's what we used to represent our velocity. And the velocity at the end of the time period we're looking at, um, if I trace that back, this is what I'm going to use the letter V for. So V is actually our final velocity. The way to remember it is that U comes before V, so U is your starting velocity, your initial velocity. The end velocity comes after the final velocity, so that's going to be the V. And we're going to label the time as T, a lowercase t. Now, if you remember from the first video in the series, we made a connection uh, between the displacement, uh, which is another word for the distance, and the area under the graph. We use the letter S for displacement rather than the letter D, and we know that equals the area under the graph. So let's have a look at the shape of this graph. What shape represents the area underneath the sloping graph that we have here? We have the area of a trapezium, or a trapezoid, depending on where you're from. And the formula for an area of a trapezium is a half, and then in brackets, a plus b, uh, multiplied by h. So let's just define what these letters are in the context of the formula for the area of a trapezium. Well, a would be the length of one parallel side, and b would be the length of the other parallel side and h is the perpendicular height. So the perpendicular height is always the distance between uh, the two parallel sides. Even though in this case, it would be going horizontally, you always must think of it as being the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides. So let's just identify what that is in this particular case from the velocity time graph. Well, the length of one parallel side would be the value of u, our initial velocity. We can see here it's the difference between u and zero, so that's just going to be the value of u. And similarly, for the other parallel side, that is going to be the value of v. The difference between v and zero is just going to be the value for v. Now, if you're thinking about the perpendicular height, so the distance between the two parallel sides, well, that will be represented by our value for t, for a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the values from the velocity time graph into our formula for the area of a trapezium. Well, we know that area is equal to the displacement, so I'm going to use the letter S to represent displacement, and that's going to equal a half of, well, the value of the two parallel sides added together. So in this case, that's the value of U plus V. And then that's all going to be multiplied by the value of the height, the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides, which in this example is t. So I can redefine the formula as s equals a half, u plus v in brackets or parentheses, multiplied by t. And here we have another key formula, one of our kinematic equations of motion, s equals a half, u plus v in brackets, t. So there we go, that's the formula for finding displacement when you have a change in velocity. It's equal to the area under the graph, which is the formula for a trapezium or a trapezoid, so it's similar to a variation of that, and we can then use that equation to discover what displacement is when we have a difference between the initial and the final velocity. So that's it for this video. I'm going to see you on the next video on the kinematic equations of motion. Thank you very much for watching.